quiet on the set, and action! The year is 1790. Rhode Island has finally ratified the Constitution, meaning that all 13 states had approved the new plan for government in the United States. The journey to get to this moment in history wasn't easy, but the document successfully established a framework for governing the country through the use of several basic principles. Popular Sovereignty The word sovereignty means power, and popular is in reference to the people. Popular sovereignty, then, means power comes from the people. The best place to see this evident in the U.S. Constitution is in the first line of the document. It starts with, We the people of the United States. It is the people who are creating the government and giving it power, not a deity or a single monarch. An example of people giving the government power today is through voting. The United States is a democracy. In a democracy, people elect representatives to make decisions on their behalf in government. This brings us to the next principle, republicanism. In a republic, people elect representatives to make decisions in government. The United States can be called a representative democracy or a republic. This idea was important to the American colonists because they wanted the people to have the power to choose their own government officials and remove them or choose new leaders in future elections if they weren't following the will of the people. It should be noted that while we've talked about the people giving the U.S. government power through elections, in 1788, the people were a small group relative to all persons who lived in the U.S. at the time. Specifically, only white, landowning men held the power to choose representatives and vote in elections. The country had a long way to go to truly uphold the concept of we the people at the time. Limited government. Another important principle is the idea that the power of government officials is limited. They can't do whatever they want whenever they want to do it. They have to follow the laws of the country just like everyone else. The Constitution makes sure that no one is above the law. One way is by ensuring that fair elections are held to allow new officials to represent the people. Another way is through the separation of powers. Power of government in the United States is divided between three branches. The legislative branch, which makes the laws, the executive branch, which carries out the laws, and the judicial branch, which interprets the laws. Each branch of government has specific responsibilities and the ability to check the powers of the other branches. This system of checks and balances, another principle of the Constitution, ensures that one branch can't become too powerful. For example, Congress has the power to make laws, but the President can approve or veto them. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has the power to declare those laws unconstitutional if they violate the U.S. Constitution. Federalism Power is not just shared between the branches of government, but also between the national government and the states. This is the principle of federalism. Certain powers belong just to the national government. These are called enumerated powers. Only the national government has the power to declare war, regulate trade between the states, print money, maintain the armed forces, and establish courts, and more. Powers that are reserved just for the states are aptly called reserved powers. These can include establishing schools, making rules for elections within the states, creating local governments, and basically anything else not delegated to the national government. Finally, the national government and state governments share some powers. These concurrent powers include the power to establish courts, lay and collect taxes, borrow money, and pass laws, just to name a few. Government at all levels also has the responsibility to protect individual rights. Individual Rights Rights are freedoms that people have that must be protected by the government, according to the Constitution. The Bill of Rights lists many of these freedoms, and examples include the right to freedom of speech, trial by jury, right to a speedy trial, freedom of religion, the right to assemble, the right to bear arms, 
protection from unreasonable search and seizure, and much more. That's a wrap! These principles guide government decision-making and are embedded into the framework of the U.S. Constitution. The next time you read the news and see an article about government, consider which principles are evident and you'll understand how they impact the lives of people every day. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the like button to show some love. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, keep pursuing history.